So I have a, one more tool that's going to help you deal with these so that you're not afraid of chemicals. And that is what I call, it's an and world. A N D. And. Well, what does this mean? And means I can be scared. I can be nervous. I can even be angry. You, you know, a bad call. You get uh, a bad call on you or a non-call that should have been called on the opponents. So anger can sometimes create interference. You're too angry to play smart and you end up fouling or getting off uh, your strategy for what you're supposed to do out there because all you can think about is getting even with the guy. That's not good, good hockey at times. So anger, can all those difficult emotions are flooding your body. You're scared, you're angry, you're nervous, all that stuff. What you do when you're in those chemicals, when you're in those emotions, you just tell yourself, wow, feeling some chemicals and going out there and kicking some butt. And you go with is my point. So another... Um, simple way that I explain this, and mostly I, re I reserve this for when I'm talking to girls, is you embrace the emotions, the chemicals. You can't fight them. They're it's your own body. You can change the little red dots at the lower square that I explained earlier so that the chemicals don't happen in the first place, which is the greater work we do. But once they're triggered, forget it. The only thing you can do is go with them and not be afraid of them. So the great thing about the mental game is you can practice it everywhere. So when you get good with being okay with being in your chemicals and know you can still do what you need to do while in those chemicals, wow, I'm nervous, I'm scared, and I want to play the best game of my life while I'm feeling nervous. So uh, there's, this, uh, there's this awesome book it. But it was a whole book of top-level athletes that, that each one, the whole book was about what I'm saying, how top-level athletes have performed amazing when they were stressed, pressured, tense, tight, worried, and nervous. Uh, one story I'll give you really quick. Bill Russell, who was um, the Michael Jordan of basketball way before Michael Jordan, um, he was the best ever in the 50s and 60s. And he dominated. And before every game, he would get so tense, tight, nervous that he would throw up. He literally would, they'd have, the team would have dinner, and then before the game, he'd be in the locker room all over the floor. And then one year, he stopped throwing up in the middle of the season. And it turns out, he ended up having the worst season of his career. And nobody, could, nobody connected the two. He stopped throwing up and his game is going downhill. Anyway, his team, the Celtics, at the time they were a dynasty and they had great players that got him to the championships anyway. And all the press was saying, he's washed up, he's a has-been, he's done. This is the last year you'll ever see Russell. And he got so uptight about that that in one of the championship games, he threw up again. And he ended up being... MVP three out of four more years. I don't know how many more championships. The point about that is you can feel nervous, tense, tight, scared, any of those difficult emotions and perform your best. They don't need to slow you down. Most of that is your own thinking about it. And what we think about stuff, we have a choice. <laughs>